welcome back to Open Heart Conversations, where we come together as community to explore the world's spiritual and religious traditions. I'm your host, Reverend Renee Rossi, and I'm so happy to be back with all our viewers and listeners. Today, we are exploring the healing power of channeling and spirit communication with artist, writer, and channel, Asandra. Asandra attended Parsons School of Design in New York City and was an art director at Art and Auction Magazine. For the past 37 years, Asandra has worked professionally as a full trance channel and has an international clientele. She channels master spirit teachers exclusively with a focus on assisting individuals in the fulfillment of their soul's highest journey. Asandra's paintings and prints reflect her spirituality through vibrant color and symbolic imagery. And she has exhibited in solo and group shows in New York, Washington, Florida, Colorado, North Carolina, and California. Asandra, welcome to Open Heart Conversations. Thank you so much for having me, Renee. And I want to update the bio because I think it's 39 to 40 years that I've been channeling. Okay. I forget to update the bio. (laughs) It's been a long time. <laughs> yes. No, thank you. Thank you for that update. Um, we're so we're so happy to have you here. I'm so excited about this conversation. Um, I'd love to start with um, sort of at the beginning, if you can explain okay. <clears throat> what is a channel. Okay. A channel is someone who acts as a conduit for spirit, in my case, for spirit to speak through. So I am a, a deep trance or a full trance channel. And what I do is I go into an altered state or what we call a trance, and I lend my body to the spirit guides so that they can come through me and speak to my clients directly. But in the broad sense, a channel is someone who acts as a conduit. So a healer could be a channel, an artist, a creative person. So you can use that connection as a conduit for the spirit realm for anything, really. Mm. Mm-hmm. Everyone's a channel ultimately. I love that. And in, in yeah. their own their own way, their own Absolutely. personal unique way. Yes. So how did you um how did you discover this about yourself? Can you tell us your story and and how you came to be a a, a transmedium channel? Yeah, it's a bit of a story, but I'm going to and I have a lot of different versions of it. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you the one that I think is most significant. Um you know, I had been practicing meditation since I was a teenager. So I was already on my path by the age of 15, let's say. I had a spiritual teacher. I traveled the world. I had um, lived in an ashram for a while. So I was already on my path. The thing is that the missing piece for me was what was my service? How was I going to give back to humanity? And I started to have this feeling that I needed to do more. It wasn't enough that I was on this path and so forth and so on, and maybe helping people find their way. So I started to ask the universe. I mean, I didn't really know what I was, who or what I was asking. I was just sort of putting it out there, like a deep heartfelt uh, request from my soul that I need to do something meaningful in my life. And at that point, I was probably in my mid-20s, I would say. And so a series of events happened where a very, like, basically my best friend was going to see this channel with a whole group of people in New York City. And they would go every Sunday and he would do these, he was a deep, he is a deep trance channel. And he was doing these sessions in um, uh, someone's loft space every Sunday. So she would talk to me about it and she'd say, oh, you should come, you should come, you should come. I basically brushed it off for a year because I didn't know what she was talking about. I didn't know what spirit guides were. I didn't know what channeling was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what mediumship was. And I thought, no, that's crazy. And so one day I heard this voice loud and clear. And at that time, the medium's name was Paul. And the voice said, go see Paul. Very clear very specific. And it shook me to my core. So I said to her, you have to make an appointment for me. So I had this private appointment with him and it blew my mind. I mean, basically what happened is that when the spirits were speaking through him, they knew me and they knew me at a core level that no one else knew. 
And that's the mm. thing that was so remarkable about who are these guides and how do they know something I've never talked to anyone about? You know, that deep yearning in your soul. And so I started to, he he became my medium and I started to go to him and periodically. And I don't know if it was like a year or two into it. They said, you know, you can do what this medium's doing. And I sort of looked around the room and went, am I the only one in the room? Like, no, thank you. <laughs> I did not want to do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I did not want to do it. But what happened was the guide started to just come in and move through me and do intoning. And at that point, it was like, okay, I have to get control over this crazy thing that's happening. And it wasn't mm-hmm. bad or negative. It was just, I don't know what this is. So I was led to this teacher who actually, I think he passed away this year, Alexander Murray. And he was a great teacher channeling. And so I went to one of his group readings in his apartment in uh, Upper West Side, I think it was. And when it got to sort of Q&A, and I did not ask a question, okay? I just Mm -hmm. listened. And the guides came in and they went, so you want to be a medium. And again, it was like, oh my God, who are they talking to? So I I would say it was sort of in the cards, like it was already happening. And I started to take classes with him. By the time I was done with those classes, I, I was very clear. This was my calling. This was my path. This is what I was going to do. And basically I quit my job. I was an art director for a sort of posh magazine. Everybody thought it was crazy. You don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that was it. That was it. I've been channeling ever since. It's been (laughs) almost 40 years, I think. That's my story. But I think it was like the main thing is the call to the universe that I really want to be doing something meaningful. And I think for me, it's not the channeling that's important. It's the waking up. It's paying attention to the call and waking up and then being guided to whatever it is. And I think for myself as a channel, that's the biggest message for people, because Mm. the people that come to me are people that are really purposeful and they're really on their path because that's those are the clients I want to work with. I don't want I'm not interested in someone who wants the lottery numbers like that's not it. And Mm -hmm. the main thing is it's about waking up, you know, to the higher path that we're on. And why are we here? Why do we exist? What have we come here to do? It's not about mentally figuring it out. It's about feeling that energy in your soul and allowing it to show us the way. And so that's basically how it happened for me. Mm. I love, I love this story. There's so many parts I want to dive into in our conversation. Um, One, especially you spoke about, you know, basically saying no for a year and sort of like there was a lot of resistance. And I think that's really relatable for people, um, not just people who find themselves on the path to become a channel, but just any, anywhere they are in their life. Sometimes there's a resistance to, you know, what, what you're being asked to do in your life. And and I love that you spoke to that. I think that's really important. Um, so, um, as you're getting these messages and and you're sort of listening to this calling, um, can you speak to us about like who you're communicating with when you're channeling? What is speaking through you? Okay. So again, in my case, the, you know, when you're a channel, again, whether you're a trans channel like me or you're a healer or artist or whatever it is, we have the option of who and what we want to call on. It's not arbitrary. So in my case, I was very clear from day one, because remember, I had already been on my path. I'd already been meditating. I'd already been clear that there was a higher path to walk. So my arrangement with the spirit world was, I only want to work with master guides. I only want to work with spirits that are evolved, that have great wisdom, They're not perfect. They don't know everything, but they have accumulated great wisdom. And Mm -hmm. they're going to help the people I'm working with to find their way onto their higher path. So I predominantly work, I personally predominantly work with master spirit guides. And a master guide is just a being that has mastered a higher level of consciousness, you know, a higher level of wisdom and knowledge. Again, they're not all knowing, but they have that insight. And they can see that in the individual I'm working with, they can see 
that individual's soul path and Mm -hmm. guide them. So it's not, I'm giving you some canned arbitrary advice. It's they can see into where, what that person's higher path is. They can see into where that person's blocked or maybe has some karmic issues from the past. And they can also see the way forward. So it's this whole sort of, because they're seeing outside of ordinary time. You know, we look at things from the linear perspective and we think past, present, future. But Mm -hmm. in the spirit realm, that time and space limitation doesn't exist because time Mm -hmm. is, you know, it's a pretense. So Mm -hmm. when they're guiding people, they're seeing the whole picture. And yet it's not like, okay, here's spirit. And I'm going to tell you every step you should take. And I'm going to tell you everything you should do. No, they come in and say, look, This is the work you have to do to clear the way. This is what you might be healing. This is what you might be clearing. This is what you might need to do. So we have our homework. We have the work. And that's the path. Each Mm -hmm. individual has their path. What is it that you're doing that you... That's why there's no cookie cutter path. You know, you can't say, well, this is how it's done. Because we're each totally unique. And so... If we're striving for the greater thing, like what's the greater thing? The greater thing is my my higher destiny. But that doesn't mean it's all etched in stone. It means that there's like a blueprint of our journey, of our path. And the more conscious we become of that, the more we're called forward to this greater thing. And so the spirits come in and they kind of help people along to assist them and say, okay, this is what you need to do to clear the way. And this is the path ahead. And this is, it's beautiful. It's always beautiful. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. the thing. The path ahead is always beautiful. Mm. It's just, what are we, you know, is it a bumpy road? Is it a steep climb? Is it a flat path? It's changes all the time. And there's an evolution of the process. So, you know, kind of getting back to your, your query is that for me to work with the master guides, the highest spirit energies. That was my arrangement with spirit. And I thought, I don't want to do anything less than that. I only Mm -hmm. want to work with those people that really are waking up or have awakened to the fact that they're on a higher path. Mm -hmm. And over time, it took me a little while because in the beginning, nobody really, you know, people thought I was like a glorified psychic and they'd come in with all this. I'm not against psychics. I love psychics. (laughs) It's just that that's not what I'm doing. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not here to kind of tell you everything you should do. And it took a while until there were enough people out there around the world, because my clientele is global, so that there would be enough people that were open to this notion that they're on a higher path and that path is a guided path. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. really what my work is. And I think that's the potentiality of being a conduit, being a channel. Mm-hmm. And what you're saying, it's out, it's so empowering to the individual individual because one, each person has their own unique path. Yes. So there's no need to compare or strive to, oh, let me do it the way they did it. You know, it's individual to you. And also what I hear you saying is that we have choices along the way. It is not fixed. It is not sort of laid upon us like this is how your life will go and just follow these steps. You know, we we get to make choices along the way. Well, you know, one of the things that spirit often says is the one real power that we as humans have is free will. We have free will. And that means we're making choices constantly. We're making little mundane choices. We're making big, deep choices. And we're often making them subconsciously. You know, whether we're in sabotaging ourselves or we're making good choices and so we that's the thing that differentiates us, say, from the animal kingdom, for example, who who rely on instinct. We have free will. That's our power as a human. And that means that even if you have a path that's, say, your destiny, you still have to choose it. Hmm. You still have to make that decision, which, you know, based on my story, obviously, <laughs> I had to choose it and I didn't want to choose it, but eventually right. I did. You know? <laughs> and so the choosing, every time we make a choice to choose that higher path, the thing that's true for us, we become more empowered and mm. the destiny path opens up more, but we have to keep choosing. We mm-hmm. have to make conscious choices. We have to take the subconscious shadow stuff and bring it to the surface, heal the things that are in the way 
and clear the way and keep choosing. And I think that when you understand that free will notion, it's not arbitrary. It's not just like this vague thing, like you are sitting at the seat of, it's the paradox, right? We're in control, but we're not in control. You know, mm-hmm. it's the great paradox, but we do have that one thing. And that's that's an enormous power to choose. To choose, you know, if you know nothing else, you don't know what your path is, you're confused, just say, I choose my highest path. I choose my destiny. Then you're on your path. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, don't, you don't have to know the details. Mm-hmm. I choose my highest path, period. So nothing less than that, right? <laughs> Simple. <laughs> yes, simple, simple, and yet very complex in, yeah. in, what, in what you're agreeing to. Yes, yes, I love that. Um, choose your highest path. Um, I want to dive in a little bit. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, what what spirit says, and I'm wondering if you can de- define spirit a bit more for our audience, um, because there are different um, different uses for that word. So, what does it mean to you, and what have you mm-hmm. learned? Um, about it. Yeah, I would say semantics is always a big issue because you have soul, you have inner being, you have higher self, you have spirit, you have spirit guides. I mean, spirit of the universe. Ah, which one is it? I think, you know, you have to sort of choose your words, which one you mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Uh, through me, the guides often refer to sort of the great everything as the spirit of the universe, meaning the universe itself is spirit. The universe itself is higher intelligence. The universe itself is consciousness. And out of that comes, you know, these master beings, comes uh, um, our guides that are working with us, comes our higher self, comes Mm -hmm. our inner self. So, you know, I would, for me, soul and inner spirit, they're interchangeable. I'm sure there's some people that would disagree and they define it. We don't want to over-intellectualize this kind of thing. But there are, the thing about spirit guides is they are individualized. They are their own being. Mm -hmm. And yet we're all connected to the same source. So again, it's that paradox. We're separate, but we're all one energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, you just have to find the thing that works for you in terms of the wording. Mm -hmm. And we all have spirit guides, correct? Absolutely. I mean, imagine, imagine if you came here into this incarnation without higher guidance. I mean, you, I think people don't realize how insane that would be if you didn't have a directive forward. You know, I have some clients that's like, oh, I can't feel my spirit guides. I'm like, yeah, but they're there. Just you're just trying too hard to figure this thing out to Mm -hmm. open yourself up and be receptive because, you know, those like those synchronous moments, those synchronous experiences we have. I always feel that's the hand of spirit. You know, I always feel that's that consciousness, that's that presence of being. And our spirit guides are, they're with us. You know, they're like our tribe, our soul tribe. They're connected. Imagine you came here and you had no family. You had no one you could relate to. I mean, you would be the most lost soul on the planet. And so our guides are that deep connectedness. They know us deeply and profoundly and powerfully. And so when we come in and, you know, there's that other thing of like, we're coming into this world, but where do we reside? Really? Do we reside in this earth in linear third dimensional time? Or do we reside in the universe in infinity? That's the real truth. You know, I think we reside in the infinite. We reside in the eternal, but we have this sort of realm in which we exist as humans that has like a container of linear, a linear construct that we function Mm -hmm. within, but we can access these higher dimensions all the time. And that's where our guides are. They're around Mm us. They're always around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you can speak a bit, um, you know, you mentioned clients you work with and they say, oh, I, I can't hear my spirit guide or, you know, sort of like, how do we receive messages? Like, how do we receive that guidance? Is there one particular way or, um, you know, how might it come through? Well, I think when when someone says, I can't feel my eyes or I can't hear them, it's because they're trying to hear them. Mm. And maybe they need to feel them, you know? Yes. Or because they think I'm going to hear them. You know, maybe they have a conversation with their guides through me as a medium and they're having a back and forth 
but you can't do that when they're disembodied. You know, that's why they borrow a medium's body so they can converse in the languaging and way we do. But if you're going to sense them, sometimes it's an impulse. Sometimes it's a feeling. Sometimes it's just things happen like a synchronicity. Some There are people that can smell like a certain fragrance and like, oh, my, I smell lilac. My guides are around. You know, it's, it's just this thing of not having a fixed idea and being very, very open to and trusting that the way forward is clear and then spirit has a way to get in because if we're trying to get in touch with it we are actually blocking it because we're trying Mm -hmm. so when we do the opposite and we just say okay i'm just going to open myself up to receive the directive the guidance then they they have a way in because spirit cannot override that like here's where that free will comes in so if subconsciously our free will is blocking it because we're trying so hard to get it that block is something spirit can't they can't override that they don't have the right to do that we have to give spirit permission that's the way this whole thing works Mm -hmm. so sometimes we're subconsciously blocking it and that's Mm -hmm. the whole thing about just being in the practice of if If every morning we just open ourselves up, this is what I do every morning. First thing, open my eyes, kind of getting up. I do a little invocation and I call on my spirit guides. Every morning, start of the day before I do anything else. And I list their names because I I know who they are by now. Right. But even if you don't know, you can say I call on all of my highest spirit guides. Call them in. I open myself to receive the way forward, you know, the clear path forward. And And clarify that at the top of the day. I think just doing that one thing rather than getting up and being in your head about, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. And what about my schedule? Just, okay, call in on my guides and, and, and affirm that the way forward is clear. And I now walk my highest path and I call in that guidance, start the day that way. Mm -hmm. I do that every day without Mm -hmm. fail. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's a, it's, it feels like too, you know, there's a, you're making the choice to sort of get out of your own way, like not going to force this, not going to control this open to receive what is available to me. Yes. And then just the hardest part is not calling that in. We can do that by rote, right? The (laughs) hardest part is like not reverting back to our head where we're trying so hard to make it work. And listen, I'm, you know, guilty of that every day, but um, you know, I, sometimes I think I started channeling really young because I'm such a hard case, you know, like I really needed to understand this, but that's the whole thing is learning to trust the way forward is there. If we open ourselves up, look in our, in our modern world, in the 21st century, the, 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 the indoctrination is the opposite, you know, go out and make it happen, make a life plan, you know, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of the polar opposite of just opening to receive and that's seen as passive but it's not passive entirely because it's a conscious choice a conscious free will choice to choose that path every day and that's an active choice Mm -hmm. and the passive so it's yin and yang the passive part is now i open myself to receive but i have made that declaration to the universe that i'm in that position of availability and readiness to receive the way forward and then you go into the receptivity so you have the balance of yin and yang. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love how you explain that. It's like the the intentionality of it is yes, is the key. intention. Mm, beautiful. So, would you consider channeling or this sort of spirit communication a spiritual practice? For me personally, it's my service. So I don't really think of it as my practice. My practice is I do qigong, I meditate. Mm-hmm. You know, I try to be a conscious being. Uh, In my case, because remember the story, I asked for a way that I can do good in this world. I wanted to have a higher path. And so the channeling came in as an answer to that prayer. So it became Mm -hmm. my service. But, you know, there's no limits. If you find a way to make it your practice, anything's possible. Mm. So why is it important for um, us as humans to to have spirit communication in our life? 
Well, for me, it's important because because I cannot imagine. It's like it's like someone would just put a blindfold on and go, "All right, go about your day," <laughs> like, and then you're bumping into things all day. Right. <laughs> like, why would you do that when you know? And you know, here's the thing: for people that perhaps are uninformed about what spirit guides are and channeling, they don't really understand. It's not a spirit telling you what to do with your day and how you should live and what you should do. It's not that. It's that you're following your path and you're following your guidance and you're opening up to receive the way and the way is magical and our spirit guides are part of that magic it's part of the beauty but it's not like oh i can't function without them i don't know what to do it isn't that it's that i've invited that energy in of support of consciousness of inspiration and directive because that's what I want. And look, as humans, we tend to be dense. I mean, let's just call it what it is. We're not that evolved yet. We're, we tend to be, I know we like to think of ourselves as that way, but clearly look at the state of the world. We are, we're, we're barely where we need to be as conscious beings. So if we can have that support and love and inspiration, how could you live without it once you know it's there? It mm-hmm. just doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even just the the invitation to live a magical, supported, yes. guided life. Yes, and we can um, do that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, free will choice. We don't have to ar- wait for it to arbitrarily show up. We can choose it. I think that's mm-hmm. a concept that people just don't really understand. Like, choose that path. Don't wait for it to show up. Make a conscious choice. Mm-hmm. And then it will show up <laughs> magically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. By your participation in, yeah, in calling you have it to in. get in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so in your, your 39, 40 years of, of working with spirit in this way, um, I'm wondering if you could share with us some of your, your favorite stories or, or, you know, maybe biggest lessons um, that the spirit has taught you. Like, what are some of the things that have really impacted your life? You know, honestly, we've probably already discussed it because for me, the biggest thing is um, opening myself up to receive and trusting the path forward. And you, that sounds like a pretty basic lesson, but I feel like every day of my life, I am learning this lesson every day of my life. And I've been on my path since I was a teenager. I mean, think about it. I spent the better part of my life on my Mm -hmm. path. And I feel there's so much to learn. It's just endless. So it's really more about, it's more, it's really more about less, sort of being more Zen, being, you know, trying less hard, just being more present, trusting more. That's at least for me. This mm-hmm. is personal. You know, for me, that's the thing that I've had to learn. And I think that the trust issue, when I think about my clients, that's a really big one. Trusting the path is ahead of you, trusting it's all flowing, trusting the way forward will be present, available. This is not easy because, again, our worldly indoctrination is different. Go out and make it happen, you know, da 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 da, all this stuff that we're taught. And we believe that we have to do all these things, but really we don't. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things we, we can get rid of and just be present. I think the main thing is to be in contact within our own self. You know, so we talk about spirit and we think, well, they're out there and they're around us, but we can't get in contact with spirit unless we're in contact with our own inner spirit. That has to come first. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're just outside of yourself, trying to get in touch with the spirit world. That's when it doesn't work. That's when people struggle with this. If So I had that background of having meditated for a good 10 years before spirit came in. And I, I'll tell you an interesting thing. Right before I went into full, you know, channel, like channeling full time, when I was just learning how to channel and studying with this teacher, Alex, um, this, the spirits would wake me up around two in the morning, three in the morning. I'd get up, I'd go into my living room and I'd go into do a two hour deep meditation. Like, I don't even do that now. I might do 20 minutes tops, you know, mm-hmm. and this happened night after night after night and went on for months. I was doing two hour meditation, just sitting like 
total zen, quiet. And I didn't know why I was doing it. I was just doing it. But I realized in hindsight, <clears throat> they were preparing me to be the vehicle for them. Mm-hmm. Because once I started channeling, I didn't get the 2, 2 a.m. nudge to meditate. It's that I listened to it. I paid attention. I just did this thing. I didn't know why I was doing it. So I think we have to prepare the vehicle. We have to be in touch with our soul, in touch with our heart. I honestly think that's more important than being in touch with your guides, is being in touch with your inner being. Because if you don't have that as your baseline, Mm -hmm. then it's just this thing you're trying to get. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that's always central. And, you know, having like a practice, like you say, that puts you deep in touch with that. Whatever is your way of doing it, that to me is essential. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious how this might support a person who is going through difficult times, like someone who's grieving or, you know, people who are living through war or trauma and, and to know that you have this connection and this support, like I would imagine that that would impact their lives in some positive way. Well, I think the thing that's valuable when someone's going through some kind of crisis or trauma is to be able to, because when you're in it, you're just in that thing. You're in that emotion. You're in that struggle. You're in that intensity. You can't see beyond it Mm -hmm. uh, because it's so intense. One of the things that spirit does when people are going through these things is they show them the big picture. And the big picture includes what we would call our past, as in past lives, karmic energy, like going way back and our future, meaning what's ahead of us. So the whole spectrum of our path, the whole spectrum of our reality. So if we're just in this one narrow thing, because it's so intense. And if someone, a client comes to spirit because some traumatic thing has happened or happening, the spirits take this narrow thing and they give them the broad spectrum. They show them the overview of their whole path, where they've come from, what they're healing, what they're moving towards, why that traumatic experience is important for them because there's a lesson. Maybe they're going to be a healer because they're going to heal people that have gone through trauma, for example. You know, there's a reason. It's nothing's arbitrary. So when you come to spirit and they have the big picture, you get to see the big picture. And I think that that brings a comfort to people because when you're in a struggle, you that's all you know. And you don't, it's like your caged animal. How do I get out of this? I'm in mm-hmm. so much pain. So when you have that big, big insight, it's like, oh, this is just an important part along the way. It's not an obstruction or because you did something wrong or a punishment. It's actually part of your journey and it has mm-hmm. a meaning. When you get the meaning and you understand it's part of this whole big picture of where your soul is going. That immediately shifts you out of the struggle or the pain, Mm. shifts you out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Healing, (laughs) the the perspective. It's it's healing. It's just healing. That's the the only word I can use to describe it. (laughs) In a nutshell. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So who, you know, this, this connection with spirit and like, who is this for? Is it for, you know, only people who consider themselves enlightened or spiritual? Is it for, um, you know, even is it for people of a specific religion or faith tradition? Like, like who, who is this for? Well, I can tell you who it's not for first. Okay. Okay. It's not for someone who thinks the spirits are going to tell them what to do with their lives. It's not for them. And mm-hmm. I've had now former clients, because <laughs> they're not my clients anymore, <laughs> get mad at the spirit world because they they think that's what the spirits are supposed to do. So that's what mm-hmm. it's not for. I think that for me anyway, I can only speak from my own experience as, in what I do as a channel is that this higher wisdom is only for people that are really receptive to it mm-hmm. because another person can't hear it. They don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. It's too abstract to them for them. But if you have a yearning, I mean, it starts with a yearning. It starts with a call, like a call to something greater. Like it was for me. Like I felt like there's something calling me. It's waking me up. And usually when people come, they're either at the beginning, the onset of that call, 
or they've already like been in it for a while, but they they need some support to get to the next level of taking that energy and bringing it into the world. So for me, it's about assisting people who sense or already know that they have a higher path to walk because mm. then there's what happens is as a channel, there's a sender and a receiver, you know, I'm the vehicle and then there's the spirits that are coming through me and there's the receiver is the client. So mm -hmm. if the client is, does not have a very open consciousness, the guides can't really come in. Mm -hmm. They can't do that. They can't speak to someone that can't receive it. So mm -hmm. there's a back and forth and that setup is essential. So sender and receiver, right? So for me, the clients, the more open and receptive they are, the more powerful the energy that's going to come through me, the more powerful the light and wisdom. So mm. when I first started, I had to work with everybody. That's what happens when you start. And that's probably true for healers and light workers of every kind. You have to work with everybody that shows up. And let me just tell you, they weren't all enlightened mm -hmm. <laughs> in those early days. Um, but there were a few that were, and who was still my clients and today and um, gradually over time. And now I'm at the point where, you know, I could say my client base are people all over the world that know they have a higher path. And that, that makes it beautiful for me because they are so receptive to the light and the wisdom and the healing and the love and the support that they're getting. I mean, sometimes I come to the end of a session and, a client I've worked with for a long time will say, I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you as the channel and the spirits, and I don't know what I would do without this. And it's not because of dependency. It's because it's rare. Mm -hmm. It's rare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why. So if it's rare, only those that are open to what that truth and consciousness is, for me, are the appropriate people. Because it's otherwise, it's just lost on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you've brought up the word calling several times in our conversation and um, you, you described to us what, you, what your experience was like, you know, how might somebody recognize that they're being called? Yeah. When, when um, like, you know, I was being awakened <laughs> to meditate, you know, yes. <laughs> like there is something that nudges you and it's relentless and it does not stop. And it's from within. It's not like your idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I would be a good healer. No, it doesn't work that way. It's mm -hmm. something's moving you. And so it's it's almost invariably a thing that we feel is bigger than us. We always feel like I, I can't, I, I don't know how I could possibly do that. I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. I'm not healed enough. You know, generally that's what people always think. I, I don't know how I could be a vehicle. It's always something bigger than us. And it's a mm. feeling, it's a calling. Something's directing us to a thing that's bigger than our identity and what we think we're even capable of. And it's mm -hmm. relentless. It does not stop until we listen to it. Mm. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's relentless. <laughs> and I I also want to add, perhaps it doesn't always make sense to the mind. <laughs> It does not always <laughs> look at me. I mean, I didn't even know what channeling. Look, you know, mm -hmm. I will just tell you when I started, to, when I finally realized, yeah, I'm going to do this work. There's not a, I had a big spiritual community. They turned against me. I was working at this, you know, art magazine. No one supported me. No one in my personal life. My family did not understand. I had zero support. I do mean zero. There's no, no one that supported me in doing this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I knew. I just knew it was so powerful mm -hmm. that I didn't care, mm -hmm. you know, and you just have to be willing to jump in mm -hmm. because it's so, you know, I think what it does is it changes our relationship with life and we realize, oh, I'm here for something magnificent. I'm here for something, not because I don't mean in an egoic way, but because there is a greater thing. And then it redefines reality and it redefines life. That purposefulness is so profound that you can't go back to an old idea of what life is because it doesn't feed your soul. And you just give up. It's like eating junk food every day. You know, you're going to get sick. Right? It's very mm -hmm. empty as opposed mm -hmm. to like some nutritious organic meal. 
Mm-hmm. It's a big difference. It feeds your soul. Mm. And that's it. You know, you're off and running. <laughs> Once mm-hmm. you're on that path, here's the thing. There's no turning back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. You can't go back once you have a taste of it. Once you experience that feeling, you want to return to it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to um, ask you a question. You have this beautiful book, Contact Your Spirit Guides. Mm -hmm. And um, you you said something in there that I'd like to explore a bit. Um, You wrote, originality is one of the keys to authenticity as yes. a channel, or I also feel like as a fill in the blank, could you, could you speak about that a bit? Like what originality, what you mean when you speak about that? Yeah. Um, the, the importance of that is someone might see a channel and think that's how you do it and maybe try to copy them. We have to know ourselves and we all have our own gifts and talents and experiences and unique way that we do something. So we have to allow that gift to unfold. It's like the person is trying to hear spirit when spirit's trying to show them a vision. Mm. You know, if you're ignoring the way it's going to happen for you, then you're resisting the organic way it will unfold. I think it's just allowing yourself to be guided to the unique way it's going to blossom. Mm -hmm. And then, and then embrace it. You know, like, yeah, this is the way I do this. Mm. This is how I do it. (laughs) It's beautiful. (laughs) There's no set way. You know, it's not like a template and you've got to fill this in and be exactly like that. The beauty of this path is that it's not like a vocation. It's a calling. And so you're going to use your gifts. You're going to use your talents and you're going to use your unique abilities. And I think being willing to apply that is what makes it a beautiful expression. Mm. So the origin. So if you're trying to make it look like someone else's, you, you know, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really isn't. So it feels like too. It's it's really the calling is a call to your own creativity. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. That is, it's a calling, and that again, people struggle with that because they they're afraid. I see this so often with clients, like they have so much gift and so much yearning, like they have everything there, everything lined up. Their soul is ready. They're really gifted, you know, all this stuff. But then they're, they're thinking that's not correct. My way is not right. It's got to be something else. Mm -hmm. And they resist it. It's Mm -hmm. like, no, just let your way happen. Mm -hmm. Let it happen. Trust it. Trust it. There's that word again. Trust it. <laughs> <laughs> that big, big, big word. <laughs> that big little word. <laughs> so how does this, um, how is this connected to inspiration? Well, the inspiration is sort of the guidance. You know, I think that how we are guided sometimes is that we're inspired. We're directed. You get an insight. You get an impulse. You get a vision. You get a clarity. You know, I'm an artist, as you know, a mm-hmm. fine artist, painter. So for me, the inspiration might come as like a, a color, an image, a shape. I, you know, I sort of get it that way. And then I just respond, start mm-hmm. working with that and see mm-hmm. where it's going to take me. That's mm-hmm. an inspiration. But with in other parts of my life, an inspiration might be a directive moving me in a particular way. So a lot of times the spirits will say, For example, when I was living in California, I was doing a lot of printmaking, which is a very particular, specific process. I did that for many years and I had stopped painting for a while. And then I I got this message and it was very clear. It was like, it's time to go back to painting. And I was part of two major prestigious printmaking organizations and we were doing all kinds of exhibits and I quit both of them full 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 on, just flat out quit them and went back to painting. Mm. You know, I got a message. It was very clear. Time to paint now. I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I don't skip a beat anymore. I just like go, okay. <laughs> and it was perfect. You know, it was perfect mm-hmm. to, because these are, you know, these are just creative processes, but they're distinctly different in how mm-hmm. I go about that. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was time for me to paint again. Mm-hmm. That's all. So tell me, you know, these, these two distinct creative processes, these two, um, you know, 
this, this work that you do, where do they intersect? Like how does being a channel affect your life as an artist and your work? You know, it's interesting that, uh, when I first started to try to get my work out there and think about I was living in New York, this was maybe the eighties and there was no internet back then. Right. So there was a very clear cut way in which you needed to get your work out there and it had, you had to approach galleries and uh, all this stuff. And the advice I was given was you do not tell anyone in the art world that you're a medium. You leave that out. You're just an artist and you do not say anything. And that was the directive then. It was very specific. So I never, I had tried. Yeah, I mean, my work certainly is quite spiritual, but I hid that fact mm-hmm. and hid it and hid it and hid it and keep hiding it, thinking, you know, any naively, that's what I was supposed to do. But really, it turns out that now I'm, it's more important for me to come out you know, sort of come out of the closet and go, yeah, I'm an artist and I'm a spiritualist, I'm a medium. And so I only recently, I mean, I'll be honest with you, my clients and friends, they all know I do both of these things. But to the art world, I kept it hidden. And I stopped doing that. And about two years ago, I just made a mental decision. You know, I'm just going to let it out. Not, I'm not going to shout it from the rooftops. I'm going to put it on my website. I'm going to put it in my bio. I'm going to I'm going to let it out. And I just, my work started selling really fast, like boom, 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 boom. Like suddenly I'm selling it like crazy. And I just realized that now's the time. I think there's a greater receptivity. We have the internet, things move along more quickly and it's okay. This is just personal. I'm not saying this for the world. This was Mm -hmm. my personal struggle. Mm -hmm. And once I decided to be more open that my work is visionary and it's mystical and be okay and not feel like I have to pretend it's something academically otherwise for the art world Mm -hmm. because the art world is changing too. And that for me is such a beautiful, comfortable place. So that when you talk about service and expression, now I can fully engage in it Mm -hmm. as an artist. And that's really, I mean, it's taken me a long time to get there where I felt it was okay and accepted, Mm -hmm. but here we are, Mm -hmm. you know, what a beautiful thing. (laughs) Yes, I love that. I love that you say you can fully engage in service and expression because that can apply to someone who is a parent or someone who is a business person, a teacher, you know, any human being, whatever your your calling is or whatever you're here to do in life, um, you know, spirit is here to support you in that calling. And so um, just even beginning to have that awareness would would have a huge impact. And being on. being unafraid, you know, not hiding it the way I did for all these years. I mean, even channeling, I'm still kind of underground, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I mean, people don't have to know who I am and they have to find me. I'm not, I have a website, but I'm not out there screaming it because in it, I always felt from the very beginning, people were going to have to find me. And that way I'm going to make sure that the clients that come to me are really genuine. Mm -hmm. Because I needed that too. And so it's like that. It's just like the signals out there and people that, like the dog whistle, you know, the people that can are tuned to it. They Mm -hmm. come. They show Mm -hmm. up. I don't know how it works, but that's how it works. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Well, I know how it works. I'm sure the spirits are sending them to me, but you know what I mean. I'm not in control of that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Understood. And I, I feel like, you know, that that could be anyone's experience. You know, if you're looking for students, if you're looking for business partners, if you're, you know, whatever it is, you're looking for homes to remodel because that's your life's passion. You know, the right people will come in your path with that trust and that awareness. Mm -hmm. There's always the, the thing about whatever path you're on, there's always an elevating to the next level. So let's say, you know, you're looking for homes to renovate the right people and all of that there might be a next level. Maybe that leads you to creating sacred spaces. You know what I mean? Like there's a next level. There's always going to be a next level. If you're Mm -hmm. on your path, it's always going to elevate. That's just how this works. Mm -hmm. There's always a next level. Like you, maybe you're doing that and you go and people walk into your space and they go, oh, I feel so safe here. I feel so comfortable. And you realize like you're healing through creating sacred spaces. 
Like what mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. So mm-hmm. there's always an elevated way that you can get to. Mm-hmm. I love that. Something to something that's always going to present itself and you have a yeah. choice to step into. Exactly. And there's mm-hmm. always a higher level and a high, it, it doesn't stop. Right. You know, there's not like a point where you go, I'm done. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, I mean, when you're done, you leave your body. Right? Correct. Adios. <laughs> but we're still not done. We're just doing it somewhere else. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. I love that. It's ongoing. It's, it's, it's your ongoing, ongoing path. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when people I'm living in sort of in this retirement community and everyone's most of the people here are retired. And I'm like, and people ask me, are you retired? I'm I don't really tell them what I do because I'm hidden, you know, but I'll say, mm-hmm. I, I'm never going to, you know, there's no retirement for me. Like it just doesn't work that way. I think you can change the way you work and shift it and adapt and over time. But when you're on your path and you're passionate about all the things you're doing, you don't retire. That's your path. Mm-hmm. In the ordinary world, people work up until a certain time, they get that retirement in. And then they do whatever they fill in their time. Mm-hmm. When you're on your true path, you don't retire. Mm-hmm. It's forever. Mm-hmm. I love that. Cause then that, that gives us a different interpretation of, you know, your true path isn't necessarily your nine to five job, or it isn't necessarily, you know, what we define as work. It's, um, it's, it's something where you're called to what, what's mm-hmm. calling you mm-hmm. listening to the call. Hmm. Cassandra, I'm wondering, you know, if there's, you've given us so much wisdom about, you know, communicating with spirit and and being open and receptive to it. Um, If there was like one big message or one small message, one powerful message you could, you could leave our audience with, um, you know, what's, what's one thing you really want everyone to understand about this work that you think is, um, is important or empowering or just to feel called to share? I would say that the path is guided. The path mm-hmm. is guided. Doesn't mean someone's there telling us what to do. It's guided. And if we're in touch deep within our being, if we're in touch at the deep inner soul level and we're open and receptive, then that guidance can reach us. And you can experience it as inspiration, synchronicity, maybe spirit messages. Doesn't matter how. Mm-hmm. that's the potentiality of fulfilling our life, fulfilling our path, our destiny, knowing that wisdom and guidance and support and healing and love is available. Mm-hmm. That's the, That, to me, is the most important thing. Maybe you're not interested in spirit guides or channeling. That's fine. It doesn't matter to me personally. The main thing is know that there's a greater path and we can all be on it. And that's the thing I think that integrates us as beings, there's a wholeness, there's a oneness that can be known. That's how we heal ourselves, the world around us, consciousness. We're healing ourselves and each other by understanding this deep interconnectedness. That mm-hmm. to me is the most important thing. Mm. Yes. I love that. Asandra, tell us, um, how how can our viewers and listeners learn more about your work? Well, I have two websites, asandra.net, which is my art. So that's spelled A-S-A-N-D-R-A. <laughs> Doesn't have two S's in it. So asandra.net is just my artwork. And then asandra.com is the book and the channeling and, you know, anything else I've done. So if anyone wants a channeling or find out about the book, which is published by Schiffer Publishing, by the way, um, asandra.com or asandra.net. Thank you. Yes, it's a beautiful book. I, I recommend it to all of our, our viewers and listeners. I've enjoyed reading it. And and Asandra, on, on behalf of all of us at the United Palace, I just want to thank you so much for sharing this wisdom and this guidance with us today and your energy. And, and we're so grateful to have you with us. Thank you for having me. It's been delightful. I really appreciate it. And to all of our viewers and listeners, thank you for participating in open heart conversations. Until next time, take care.